Saudi Arabia wants to host the Asian Winter Games right in the middle of the desert. No more climbing frozen mountains in gear heavier than you are. No icy valleys, just camels, endless sand, and a sun that can fry an egg if you crack it on a metal plate. Let's explore one big and unexpected idea. Building a futuristic ski landmark in a place where snow is treated as a big deal. Desert countries have already tried similar things. Dubai built its own ski slope inside a shopping mall almost 20 years ago. You could buy sneakers, grab a snack, and then go skiing without ever stepping outside. It blew people's minds back then, but compared to the project Trojina, it feels tiny. This is not an indoor side attraction. It's part of a roughly $500 billion plan to carve out a winter zone inside a desert region, right in the middle of real mountains. Trojina sits in the northwest corner of Saudi Arabia, in a mountain area with sharp ridges and long, empty stretches of land between them. It is one part of a much bigger strategy called NEOM, a plan to build new cities and resorts across this region. This whole zone is part of a desert belt across the Arabian Peninsula, with towns far apart and long stretches where you mostly see rock, sand, and sky. The climate here is really harsh. Summer days go past 100 degrees Fahrenheit, and by noon, the heat hits you from above and below like you're being baked. Leaving anything metal in direct sunlight is a really bad idea. Winters bring some relief, especially in the higher peaks. Nights can get pretty chilly, and now and then, those peaks pick up a thin layer of snow. It looks nice, but it doesn't stick around. It melts in a day or two, before you can even take pictures, let alone think of skiing. Maybe you wonder, but why go through so much trouble just for a ski center? Well, here's the funny part. It's a lot more than just a ski center. The plan is to build an entire winter city, a place with ski runs, hotels, cable cars, housing zones, golf courses, and even a crystal-shaped tower planned to be roughly the same height as the Eiffel Tower. Trojina covers about 23 square miles with about 18.6 miles of ski slopes threading across the mountains. The whole idea is to turn Trojina into a one-of-a-kind attraction that people put on their must-visit list. You ski in the morning, hike in the afternoon, and spend the day by a huge artificial lake. That lake is supposed to be the main attraction of the resort, held in place by three giant dams. Building something like that on desert rock is tough. The ground can shift and leak, so everything has to be sealed and reinforced before the lake can even exist. But even if they build the entire complex, there's still a detail they can't ignore. This place doesn't get enough natural snow for any of it to work, not even close. That's why the entire project has to rely on machines or some advanced technology to produce most of the snow. Snow machines help by blowing cold air into the air, where it turns into tiny ice bits that cover the slopes. It works, but the sun in this region warms the ground fast, so the snow can soften or melt unless they constantly top it up. The machines also need a lot of water. Since this area doesn't have natural lakes or rivers, Neom's plan is to pull in desalinated seawater from the Red Sea coast and push that fresh water through pipes and storage systems across all its zones, including mountain areas. That needs long pipes and strong pumps, plus a steady power supply so nothing shuts down when it gets hot. And even with all that, the air still has to be cool enough for snow to form properly. If it's too warm, the machines can spray all they want, but the snow won't stick. So engineers have to study the slopes and figure out which parts stay cooler and which parts heat up too fast. All of this takes a huge amount of electricity, and Trojina is supposed to get its power from NEOM's renewable energy system, which includes solar, wind, and stored energy. Solar sounds perfect because this region gets sun almost every day. But there is a catch. Panels like light, not extreme heat. When they get too hot, they produce less power. 
and that could happen right when the snow machines need steady energy the most. So the same sun that makes this place perfect for solar power can also make the panels lazier at the worst possible moment. All of this shows the basic plan, but how to sink everything in unpredictable heat is making engineers work overtime. And that challenge starts with the ground they're building on. Shifting soil or rock can delay progress or force redesigns. Then there's the problem of distance. The site is pretty far from major cities, so hauling materials to Trojina means dragging heavy equipment across miles of empty desert. Even with better roads, moving materials can still drag things down. A project of this size needs a huge workforce, special machinery, and advanced cooling systems, plus constant checks to keep everything running. Even with a massive budget, unexpected issues can pile up, so we have already seen slowdowns in other parts of Neom. So, Trojina could face the same problems. None of this means the project cannot succeed. It only shows how complicated it is to build something this big in a place that is not naturally made for what they're trying to create. When you put all the pieces together, it becomes clear why Trojina may be one of the most ambitious proposals ever. But what about some other engineering wonders that didn't seem possible at first? The Three Gorges Dam in China is one of those ideas that makes you pause and gasp. It stretches more than 7,500 feet across the Yangtze River and stands taller than the Statue of Liberty. To make it work, engineers moved over a million people and flooded entire valleys. When it finally started running, it became the largest hydroelectric power source in the world, sending electricity to millions of homes and helping protect cities downstream from dangerous floods. Another example is the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge. It's one of the biggest sea crossings ever built and the longest sea bridge in the world, stretching almost 35 miles and linking Hong Kong, Zhuhai, and Macau. To build it, engineers had to deal with deep water heavy ship traffic, storms, and strong currents. They drove huge piles into the seabed, built artificial islands, and even added an underwater tunnel so large ships could pass through. The goal was to allow cars and buses to cross the sea in one trip, instead of taking ferries. When Qatar hosted the World Cup, it had to solve a serious heat problem. The summer weather there can make it hard to even stand outside let alone play soccer. To keep players and fans safe, engineers built a cooling system under the seats, inside the walls, and around the field that pushes cold air across the pitch and lowered the temperature in the whole stadium. Cooling such a huge open space is much harder than cooling a normal building, but they still succeeded in turning this giant hot bowl of air into something closer to an air-conditioned arena. All these accomplished grand plans show that we should not write off Trojina yet. It has a few big things working in its favor. The budget is massive, the authorities are fully behind it, and Neom is being built to support it with roads, energy, and workers. Whether they finish in time for the Winter Games is still a question. But if they do pull it off, Trojina could end up as one of the most famous tourist spots on the planet. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.